right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, this will be the first six o'clock meeting I've ha have had in a while with realtors where everybody did not have a drink in your hand. So if you feel like you got to sneak out and grab one, by all means, they are, I got, yeah, I, I got bo boring old Deer Park, but maybe next time we'll spice it up a little bit. But uh, thanks all for joining us. And um, yeah, today's class, I, I it's um, uh, your first deal is, I think, the, the title. I, I, I We have a PowerPoint that we'll walk through, but just some quick introductions. Um, I, I know I've spoken with a handful of you here, and I've seen most of your names out there, but my name's Sean Hadley, uh, Cross Country Mortgage. Um, I've been with the Keller Williams office since 2005 or 2004, so uh, coming up on 17 years now. And um, really, I'll mention this again when we're done, but um, you know, really, anything we can do to help you and your business. Today's little talk is just gonna be a little bit more about the loan process, just little things you should know. I just please encourage you to ask questions, um, chat box, or, or just you know just start talking. It's a smaller group and definitely a bit informal. But um, uh, Chris, if you wanna introduce yourself. My name's Chris Bullock. Um, I joined uh, Sean's team almost a year ago now. Uh, it's been a crazy fun year. Um, I work five feet from Sean at any given time on the third floor, uh, the Pepper Pike building. So if you ever need anything, pop in, you know, call, text, whatever's easiest, let us know. And DJ, Don. Yeah, Don Jarecki. And uh, I too have been part of Keller Williams probably since what, 2006, I think, Sean, a couple of years mm -hmm. after you. So it's been quite a while. We've been, we've been uh, associated with Keller Williams here as lenders. And uh, I do cover the West Side uh, Rock River office for Sean and Chris. So if you're in River, stop by and see me as well. Yeah, and, and one thing I'll probably mention here, or repeat myself, is you know look at us to be kind of your you know finance arm. Um, obviously, you know you may have a customer who needs a loan, and we're obviously there for you. But really, to any anything you need mortgage wise, if you're a listing agent on a deal, you've got a VA offer coming in, and you just want to know, hey, give me a little brush off some things I should know. We'll give you some tips and pointers. You're running into a problem or you just need to explain something to a seller um you know we're happy to kind of step in so look at us uh, that way um chris as you mentioned chris and i uh generally work out of the pepper pike office day to day up on the third floor our office is maybe moving within the building but we will be there and then don uh, typically is camped out in the um, rocky river office but hey if you're working we're working as as you say so just uh keep all our phone numbers emails and call anytime um our families are used to it. So, um, all right, I'm going to do a share screen here. Um, I'm going to try and keep this by seven o'clock and hopefully a little bit sooner for you. Um, and, and I won't have all your faces popped up. So please just unmute yourself and ask questions by your way would absolutely encourage it. So a uh, couple of uh, quick uh, web pages I wanted to touch on. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, but just to kind of let you guys know what's happening with interest rates. Uh, this webpage, Mortgage News Daily, I, I, I reference, you know, pretty much daily just to kind of see what's going on. This is a sort of, a, there are ads on here, but this is more for the mortgage world to kind of just sort of keep tabs on what's happening in the economy and um, and news. But the, the reason I'm pulling this up now is just to kind of show you where the 30-year uh, uh, year average rate is. This isn't cross-country's interest rates. Uh, frankly, I'd say we're probably a hair better than than what shows on here. But this is a, a national survey, um, you know, current through today that says, hey, here's where most lenders, or here's where the average interest rate is nationwide. It's coming in at 3.47. Um, that's a great rate. However, if you're looking over the last 12 months, this little bar here shows the high point and the low point for rate, where rates have been over the last 12 months. So we're there, we're at the highest point we've seen in 12 months. Um, historically speaking, yeah, that's this little chart over here. Yeah, we're up a little bit, um, but you know the low point is here. And this isn't just the low point of the past seven or eight years. This is the low point of, of mortgage rate history. So we're still in a very good spot, but um, you know the trend since the middle of December, well, pretty much since the end of summer, but especially uh, a bit more over the past three to four weeks is, is upward rates. And there's more of that to come. So most are expecting rates to keep taking up a little bit here into the first quarter, probably a second order, hopefully uh, late leveling off this summer. But um, if anybody has any comments or questions, feel free. But this is something, you know, obviously we're always happy to, to, to chat one-on-one -on -one with you or your customers about, you know, the rates and, and forecasting things there. But um, anybody have any questions or comments on that before I move on? Nope. All right. 
And uh, Chris and Don, I don't need to tell you guys, feel free to chime in. I, I know you, you guys can hear me <laughs> talk all the time. Um, another one I want to reference, um, my webpage, ccmgreatercleveland.com. But Chris, myself, Don, individ individually, we each have our own branded web pages. That would encourage you to check it out. There's some great information on here, specifically into the mortgage calculators and such. Um, I mean, I, I like to be pretty hands-on with my customers um, as far as calculating payments and walking somebody through the process. But um, just know that there's some good resources here. The, the calculator specifically are probably what I get the most um, sort of comments on. Uh, videos, there's a bunch of different you know, things about the 21-day close, a big announcement about how we're partners with the Cleveland Browns. Yes, those Cleveland Browns. Um, so just know that uh, the, the webpage got a lot of great resources, but a big part of this is this little button here, apply now. Um, it's, it's almost daily where, you know, at middle of the night or first in the morning, I'll get a big, an email that uh, somebody did an online application. So a lot of my referral partners are saying, hey, yeah, give Sean a call or if you want, check out his webpage. And you know what? The customer is going right to the webpage and filling out an application there. Um, or I was talking to somebody here when I was rushing home to get in, in front of time for my Zoom, talked to a buyer and I said, hey, I'd be happy to do a pre-approval. Um, go to my webpage, start it. I, I can already see they're about three quarters way through this application. So it's just a great resource. I want you guys to know that that's there. Um, but any, any questions on that or Don or, or Chris, anything you guys want to add? Uh, I'm posting contact info in the chat if oh, anyone good. wants to copy and paste. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Um, so this, this little PowerPoint, uh, as I jokingly say, uh, maybe not jokingly, anytime I'm in a presentation, I want to know how many slides there are. So there's 13. Uh, so we'll jump by those one on one. And uh, if any of you want a, a copy of this, just shoot me it, with the emails being posted here, just shoot me a quick message and I'll reply back with a copy of this if you guys would like. Um, so what what we're going to talk about here, I think um, I, I I know some of you have been in the business here for a little while. I can recognize your names. I know you've been around for a little while. Some of you may be newer. I'm going to kind of keep this somewhat basic, but just to explain kind of the overall process, you know, how we can help you, how we can help your customers. And i um, already done with slide number one. So slide number two, questions that we typically get from a buyer. Where do I start? What, what's the first thing we do? What load programs are right for me? Um, we're going to answer some of these questions today as we kind of go through, but how much can I afford? How much money do I need? Um, how will my credit affect my ability to get a loan? And, and the answer is it will heavily impact uh, your uh, ability to get a loan. We'll get into that. And then what is the loan process? And I'll give you kind of the idea from the borrower's viewpoint and from you, the realtor, uh, even though that's pretty similar one and the same. Um, so where do I start? And the example I'll give, and J Justin, your, your face pops up here first, so I'll probably pick on you a little bit. Um, and before we're done, I want to know the story with the two uh, cactus drawings over your left shoulder, but we'll come back to that later. Um, the question of where do I start, pre-qualification. So example I always give, let's say Justin's sitting in an open house this Sunday, you know, a nice couple comes in and they hit it off. They like, they like, um, sorry, I said admit somebody. They like him, he likes them. He would know nothing more than to start shopping, shopping them around to, to go look at homes. But obviously, before he gets them in the car, starts spending his gas money in his Saturday afternoon showing houses, he wants to make sure that they're qualified. Um, and how that conversation might be is, oh, yep, Susie and Tom, you know, great to meet you. I understand you're looking for a home. You know, I'll be more than happy to talk, walk you around. Let me ask you, are you going to be paying cash for a house? They may laugh and hopefully they say yes. But if, if they laugh and say, well, no, we're going to need a mortgage. The next question is, great. Have, have you been pre-approved or pre-qualified just yet? And if the answer is yes, you know, obviously you want to kind of, you know, qualify them a little bit further, maybe talk to their loan officer or obviously throw out a, another name. Um, or, of course, you may say, well, hey, getting pre-approved and pre-qualified is step one in the process. You know, I can connect you with, you know, Chris, my guy or Sean's my guy. Or if you want to reach out to these one of these by, uh, loan officers, they can explain a bit more what's all involved and work on getting you pre-qualified and pre-approved. So. My definition, and, and Chris, myself, and Don, we kind of have a, a different definition of what a pre-approval is and what a pre-qualification is. A pre-qualification might be somebody who just jumps online, fills in the information, or maybe you know does 10 or 15 minutes of a little Q&A over the phone with one of us. And what we're asking for is where you live, where you work, um, what your income is, what do you have in your checking and savings account. Um, and we're going to pull a credit report. This is a full tri-merge credit report. 
and credit reports are good for 120 days. So if we pulled someone's credit report this Monday, that report is going to be good all the way into the first week of May. So with this pre-qualification, there's no fee, there's no cost, there's no obligation. Um, as I put in the bottom line here, by the time we're done, I'm going to tell the buyer, here's what I think we can do based on what you're telling me. So very for informal, but usually when this pre-qualification ends, we've got a pretty good idea if this person's going to be, this customer is going to be able to buy a house or maybe they need more work. And if they need more work, we spend a lot of time getting them on the right path. If it's credit maintenance they need, we're happy to give some tips or refer to an advisor, a credit specialist. Um, if they need to save up a little bit of money, I'm more than happy to give my tips on budgeting and you know go back to my college courses on financial management, things like that. But where this conversation typically ends um, is, you know, Tom and Susie, it's been great to speak with you based on everything that you've shared with me. You know, uh, looks as though you would qualify for a home upwards of about two hundred thousand dollars. Sounds like based on where your you know comfort level is, you might want to be in that one twenty five to one thirty five uh, price range. But, um, you know, the next step from here would be to get a pre approval. And we ask for, you know, the next step in the process. And I'll, we'll jump over there in a minute. But the idea is after this, this conversation, this, this pre-qualification is more or less a screening of, you know, can they buy a house? What will the qualifications look like? And we're dumping information back on them. We're talking about FHA loans, VA loans, if they're veterans, conventional loans, down payments, monthly payments, closing costs. Because some buyers, <clears throat> they may consider themselves experts because they spent 30 minutes on Google or because their grandmother bought a house 12 years ago. But we want to make sure that they know everything going into it. The last thing we wanna do is have you spin your wheels with a buyer who is qualified, who is able to buy a home, but didn't realize that they need to come up with closing costs or weren't sure, didn't realize property taxes are part of the payment. We want to you know, basically take out any surprise and knock down any hurdles, if that makes sense. Sean, yep. one, one thing I wanna to add to that is, is you made a comment that these, these people that are just starting out looking at houses um, are gonna feel like they're experts. What does happen, as soon as somebody finds out that, that this consumer is buying a house, all of a sudden, everybody around them associated with them, friends, family, coworkers, the, the woman who's ringing out at the, at, the, at the local Walmart, they all of a sudden become experts in the home purchasing process and start getting advice from everywhere. The reality of it is when it comes to financing, you wanna come to one of the three of us for that information, because we, we truly are the experts in this. And like I said, once somebody finds out that somebody else is buying a house, anybody they're associated with is all of a sudden an expert. Well, this is what I got. This is what I did. This is how I did it. And everybody's situation is unique and different. So everything's going to be different. That's, that's for sure. And, and you, just when it comes to real estate, you know, when somebody says, what's earnest money? You know, you're not going to say, oh, go ask your brother who just bought a house. They can explain it to you. You're going to be the expert, the pro, and, and we want to kind of take on that same role from the uh, from the finance standpoint. So well said, Doc. Or, well, Don. <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, that pre-qualification ends, you know, Tom and Susie, everything sounds great. You know, you're halfway there to getting pre-approved. You've got a pretty good understanding and you know you're able to buy a house. I'll follow up with Justin just to let him know we spoke. And the next step from here, ideally, would be to get pre-approved. So what that entails is getting, um, you know, the documentation, all the supporting documents to what we discussed. You told me where you work. You told me what your income is. Now we need to verify that. So we may ask for pay stubs and W-2s. We may ask for bank statements. Um, if they're divorced, we may need divorce decrees. If they had a private bankruptcy, or, or excuse me, a, a previous bankruptcy, we need bankruptcy documents. If they own a home, we need more paperwork. If uh, you know, if they, um, if they have got some credit issues, we may need explanation. So this is where we're trying to get a lot of work done, take out all the element of surprise. But when all is said and done, we want that pre-approval, uh, excuse me, we want that customer to have a pre-approval letter that says, yep, I can go buy a house up to $200,000 with 5% down. And not only are they armed with that letter, which tells you, hey, let's go shopping for a house and tells the seller, hey, I, I, I can sell this, uh, take my house off the market and negotiate with this person with, with confidence. It makes sure that the buyer knows what they're getting into. If they get a pre-approval from one of the three of us specifically, they're going to know what a down payment is, how much closing costs are, where the monthly payments got to come from are going to come from. So they're really, you know, by the time they sit down and write an offer, there's going to be no surprises beyond that point. That's our goal. So the buyer is going through an education. 
And don't just assume someone owns a house right now and you know they're buying their second home. They may have not done this for seven or eight or 10 years. And even if they do remember everything, a lot has changed. So you know, it doesn't matter if it's your first house or last house or you know, your 10th pre-approval or, or your 10th investment property you're buying, the pre-approval is still a necessary step. So um, anyway, so I, as I mentioned, we provide, we get documentation. We would have already pulled the full credit report during the pre-qualification typically. Um, and we charge no fee. So there's not many lenders who charge pre fees for pre-approvals, but if you do bump into a lender who's charging, I, I would say run. It's not the norm and it's, it's sort of, I don't say unethical, but it's unorthodox and it's not, not, not typical. So mm -hmm. um, does anybody, does that, you know, that explanation, but if you, here's a pre-qualification, very informal, you know, taking somebody for their word for what we think we can do and pre-approval, which is collecting all the documents we would as though they were under contract. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then at each of these stages, like I mentioned, when we're done with the pre-qualification and kind of segueing into a pre-approval, I say, hey, I'll follow up with Justin. Justin, you'll typically get a call from us. And sometimes if it's an email, if it's a weird hour, just saying, hey, had a great conversation with them. Good news is they're qualified to buy up a home, home up to 200. Oh, by the way, they said their cousin's a realtor. So, you know, you may want to, you know, get in touch with them sooner than later. Oh, you know what? They mentioned they're looking at condos too. So, you know, we can sh share information just to try and uh, better, you know, better equip ourselves with information to, to keep the customer happy. So um, any questions on that? Oh. Okay. Um, which loan program is right for me? Um, you know what? I forgot. I have a flyer um, that does a little comparison between conventional and FHA. I might try and drop that in the uh, uh, chat box while we're chatting. But um, in fact, Don, do you, do you feel comfortable? Do you want to run through some of these real quick? I'm going to go pull that flyer up and put you on the spot. As far as what these programs here? Yeah. Are you yeah, sure? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So Sean was saying here, there, there's there's basically four types of financing. There's conventional financing, uh, FHA, VA, other would be USDA. Each of these is unique in their own point. Um, conventional financing is, is usually for the borrower that is not credit challenged or cash challenged. You can go as little as 3% down if you're a first time home buyer and have some pretty decent credit. But most of the times it's gonna be 5% down or more in conventional transactions. And when I say decent credit, I mean like a 680 or better credit score. If you're 680 or better and you hit the 3% down, conventional is probably going to get you get you the biggest bang for your buck. FHA transactions, those are a minimum 3.5% down. FHA is owner-occupied only, which means you are buying that house. You have to occupy it as your primary residence. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and, and, and there's... And, and we'll, uh, this might be another slide here. I'm not sure what Sean's slides are, but there's mortgage insurance involved in all these transactions. Um, conventional, if you're less than 20% down, there's mortgage insurance, which is PMI, private mortgage insurance. FHA is going to have what's called a mortgage insurance premium, still PMI, um, regardless of the down payment. You could have 50 to 75% down on an FHA loan. You're still going to have mortgage insurance in it. VA is a Veterans Administration loan. You must be a veteran with an honorable discharge uh, in order to get financing. It is a zero down loan, and there is no mortgage insurance on that. There is a VA funding fee, which is usually financed into the transaction. And at times that would be waived if the veteran is on any type of VA disability. The other transaction here for other would be USDA, which is a rural loan. And the only way those loans, you're eligible for those is we literally have to put in the property address of the property that somebody's interested in into a system and it'll tell us if it's a USDA eligible loan. We just can't say because it's a rural area that's gonna go USDA, we have to plug that address in to really make that determination. Cool. Sorry, Don, to put you on the spot there with us, <laughs> give you a heads up. And uh, what I just pulled, I just put three attachments into the chat box. One is the, this PowerPoint. So I saved you guys from uh, emailing over. Um, and then I put in, um, we won't walk through all these right now, but uh, a, a mortgage comparison, uh, excuse me, a loan program comparison. So these are just some very, very, very general guidelines. In fact, actually, now that I look at it, we have to update some of the loan limits on here. But um, just this is kind of just a handy little cheat sheet to keep by you. Um, and then the second uh, or second form over here is uh, 
some other things just to be aware of when it comes to like, okay, when do I need a pest inspection or a septic test? Um, what are my seller credits limitations? So these, by, by the way, what shows up on here are usually like the Sunday afternoon at two o'clock. Hey, Sean, I'm putting together an offer. It has to be in by five. I, can, I need to ask the seller for closing costs. What's my limit? Yes, you can look to the sheet, but call any of the three of us anytime. That's, that's literally <laughs> what a lot of times we're doing over the weekends is answering those kind of questions. So um, I put those in the, uh, the, the chat box if you wanted to download those. Um, the other thing just to be aware of, um, and all of these loans that we mentioned, we're going to do an appraisal. Now, technically, on some conventional loans, we get a waiver and an appraisal is not needed. For the purpose of this talk, just assume everybody needs an appraisal. With FHA and VA, um, and Don, I don't think you mentioned this, Krimi, if, if you did, so I apologize, but um, FHA and VA, the appraiser is a little bit more pickier regarding the condition of the loan. So I'd say out of every 10 FHA appraisals, maybe one or two of the times out of those 10, the appraiser may say, hey, we want to repair. We want a handrail going from the first floor to the second floor. It's a safety issue. Or we want the GFCI outlets put in right next to the sink. So little things like that come up. Don't panic if you see FHA or if you have a house that's like a little fixer upper. Nine times out of 10, you're going to be fine. And you can always call any of us to kind of get a, a more you know personal or I, I guess uh, uh, specific. To just, uh, it's typical that they're, they're there's the possibility of repairs for an FHA, VA, or USDA loan. That does not mean an appraiser cannot call for repair in a conventional loan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the, the picture window in the front of that house is shattered, that appraiser can request that that be fixed. It is a safety issue. If it's missing half the roof, the appraiser in a conventional transaction can ask for that roof to be repaired. So just because it's conventional, it's not typical, but just because it's conventional doesn't mean that there won't be repair called for. It's a rare occasion, but it can happen. I'll tell you a quick story. I had a realtor who was upset. We called, the appraiser said, you know, mold remediation in the basement. And the realtor goes, this is conventional. We said, yeah, but mold is a health issue. And I said, did you see the basement? She's like, no, I wasn't going down there. I was like, exactly. <laughs> so um, just because it's a conventional loan doesn't mean they don't care about it. So so anyway, we, we literally have a class on each of these that goes yeah. an hour, um, but you know, nonetheless, I just want to get, we just want to give you a broad overview here to start, but um, all right, next, uh, next sort of topic. Remember I mentioned uh, buyers often ask, how much can I afford? So when we do a pre-qualification, um, what we're really doing, and, and not just cross country, any lenders, what we're really doing is qualifying somebody for a mortgage payment. So we may look at someone's income, their credit and the debt. And, you know, you see a pre-approval letter that says, yep, you're qualified for a $100,000 house. Really, what's happening is we're qualifying them for an $875 payment. And then we're saying, okay, that's probably going to be about a $100,000 house, depending on taxes, insurance, HOA fees. So I assume most of you on this call um, either have a mortgage or know somebody who does. But what's included in the mortgage, of course, the principal and interest, which is the repayment of the loan the property taxes, as well as insurances, meaning PMI, which we'll get on that slide in a second, and homeowner's insurance. Now, separate from a mortgage payment, but still a debt we always have to factor in is an HOA fee, especially if it's a condo. Um, so that is part of what's being factored in. But this is why we explain to a buyer. I mean, each of us has our own sort of way of, of, of walking a buyer and explaining the process. But this is where we kind of say, okay, well, yeah, you qualify for an 875 house, which determines, which comes out to be a hundred or $110,000 price point. Now, um, keep in mind taxes. I have that one highlighted. Taxes, as, as most of you probably know, vary from house to house and city to city. Um, you know, and I ask a buyer, where are you shopping? If they say, well, I'm looking in, you know, Ashtabula, and or I'm looking in University Heights, you have two totally tax, two totally different tax bases there. So the one person in Ashtabula, they might qualify for a 125 house because the taxes are a bit more modest, but in University Heights, because the taxes take a bigger chunk of what's allowable for the payment, they might only qualify for a $105,000 house. And this is why we ask questions, what type of property are you looking? Where are you looking? And that is a huge, huge thing. Cross Country Mortgage, we're a national company we're headquartered in Brexville. We did $50 billion in loans. We're a big, big company, but you're talking to a local loan officer. So, you know, the three of us know the difference between University Heights and Ashtabula. When you're talking to a buyer who's based in, you know, Columbus, Detroit, you know, Topeka, Kansas, they're not going to be familiar with the local areas. 
not to mention point of sales and a lot of the other sort of headaches that you can run into um, from city to city and, and county to county. But um, does anybody have any questions on that? All right. Well, no questions means one of two things. I am doing just awesome or you guys just want me to get through this. So either way, we'll just keep keep trudging on. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I actually did have a question, um, yes. but it was about USDA. Uh, what makes a property eligible? to be a uh, USDA? Well, it, as far as eligibility, the buyer does have to make below um, a certain amount. And I'm gonna do some here the old fashioned way. Um, this is what uh, comes up for what's eligible for USDA. Um, it, technically, it's best to just punch in an address um, once this web page opens. So moving a little slow because both I'm zooming and Time Warner just absolutely is horrible. So bear with me. So we would punch in an address here. Um, and we'll punch in the office address. That's why I made a comment. You have to put in the address. You just can't assume because it's rural that's going to qualify. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a little uh, tidbit here. Every county in Ohio, except for Franklin and Cuyahoga County, has some house or area that's in the USDA. So nothing in Cuyahoga County, but um, pretty much anything outside this line, and it gets real specific, you could be on one side of a street and qualify and, and not on the other. Um, so short, short version is this, this area over here is what it would qualify for. Um, and USDA is, is technically no money down, uh, discounted PMI, great interest rate. Um, they do take a little longer to close because this is one of the few programs that has to get approved outside of, in addition to cross country outside of, so it does take a little longer. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah, technically my answer wasn't just Google this, but <laughs> just take yeah, a note. The, I get it. To get that. I think <laughs> rural though. Yeah. Now, this rural. Is, yeah, like if you got a, a house for sale in Kirtland, you know, check it out because that's, it'd be great to, you know, when you put your listing out there, say USDA eligible, you're opening yourself up to a whole new market of buyers and it's, it's, it's a great option. So good question. Okay. Um, PMI, my favorite class to teach no. is my PMI course. It's, <laughs> Don loves it too, apparently. But uh, the title of the course is having a PMA about PMI, having a positive mental attitude about private mortgage insurance. PMI is a good thing. If it wasn't for PMI, everybody would need 20% down and we would not have a whole lot of home buyers running around out there. So um, in short, mortgage insurance, a lot, it insures the lender, or if it's an FHA loan, it, it's 100% insurance coming from the government, but it's an insurance the buyer pays to get a house at a better interest rate and a lower down payment than if we don't have it. Um, mortgage insurance on a conventional loan it applies if you have less than 20% down. It's not permanent. It's not there for the life of the loan. Um, FHA has got a different type of mortgage insurance. It could be there for the lifetime if the buyer's putting less than 10% down, and there's two forms of that. I'm gonna save that for the class, but just so you know, you know, jumping back when I said this flyer, homeowners insurance would be the one you know typically we're referring to uh, when we say insurance, but PMI, private mortgage insurance, is the other one. So, like I said, I have a whole presentation on that that I'm, I'm I can't wait till it's uh, that that class comes on its rotation. But um, does anybody have any questions on that one? No, but you know, Sean, it too many times the consumer gets too wrapped up in in PMI. Am I going to have PMI? 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 PMI is a necessary evil. It's very inexpensive today as compared to years ago. And the reality of it is a borrower with good credit, th their monthly PMI payment is going to be less than their probably average credit card payment. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality of it. And that PMI probably is going to go away before that credit card payment goes away. So that's a, a good spin to put on it with the consumer. And I, I know every time we comment, I'm going to say an example, but I had a customer who is, you know, heck bent on putting 20% down and the house they bought or buying a little bit out of their price point, need a little work. And they just were like, I think we're going to make this work. And I said, just humor me. Here's what 15% down looks like. The PMI was $18 a month. I don't remember what the price point was. It was a $200,000 house. That's $10,000 the buyer keys to, gets to keep in their pocket. And the true cost of that is just, you know, slightly more in interest, but $18 more in PMI. So um, absolutely great point. It's, it's a lot of, I, as I oftenly joke, people say, I don't want points and I don't want PMI. Okay, great. 
Then the next question is, what are points and what is PMI? So a lot of people just run into it saying, I don't want it, even though I don't know what it is. So, um, and again, that's part of the education with the pre-qualification and, and pre-approval. So let's walk through a scenario of, of Justin's buyers. I say, hey, good news, you qualify for a $200,000 house. And they say, well, that's great. Justin's showing me a $300,000 house this weekend. I guess it's a total waste of time. Hold on, before, before you cancel that appointment, you know, let's talk about if you're not where you want to be, how do we get where, where you want to be? Now, paying off credit cards, eh, easier said than done, but, um, and I'll come back with an example on that in a second. Um, paying off or paying down installment loans. Um, have a customer, um, we did a pre-approval for, and they were coming in about 125, they wanted to get up to about 150. Here's a little, I don't say a trick, but here's kind of a potential solution. This buyer's payment is about $200 a month on their car. They only owe about, I don't know what it was, let's say $2,500. We don't have to count that debt if it's gonna be paid off within 10 months. So I said, hey, would you be up for paying $600 towards your car payment to get it under 2,000? It's now 10 months from being paid off. We don't have to count that as a debt. Freeing up $200 in debt would raise this person's qualifications from 125 to 150. There we go, problem solved. So this is where we can kind of think outside the box. Um, Paying off credit cards, um, this is a, a, a Jarecki special, as I call it. Customer sells, selling their house, and they've got all the money from the sale of the house, and they're just putting it all down on the new house. Don jumps in and says, hey, I know you're putting you know $30,000 down on the new house, but you've got $10,000, $15,000 in credit card debt. It looks like it's been here a long time. You don't have to go this route, but just here's a what if. What if you only put $15,000 down? took that $15,000 and wiped your credit card debt free. By going up $15,000 on your mortgage, your payment's probably going up 100 bucks. You can raise your mortgage buck, uh, payment 100 bucks and get rid of $15,000 credit card. That's something you have to do, but you know, what do you think? That can be a life changer for some. Um, so you know, that's where you know, we're never gonna say, you gotta do it this way, you gotta do it that way, but you know, we're, we're there to talk about all angles that, that could benefit the buyer, give them choices. Um, you know, and just to be blunt, you know, there's a lot of lenders, especially here with as many people got in the mortgage business in the last 24 months, who all they do is answer the phone. Oh, you want a 30 year conventional fixed mortgage, 20% down? Yep, let's do it. That's what an order taker can do. You know, Don, Chris, myself, we like to think of ourselves as consultants. Hey, that may be what you end up going with in the end, but we just want to know your choices. We'd rather say A, B, C, or D. We may go right back to A, but you know, at least the buyer knows they're not going to be second guessing themselves later and they know right where they stand. So, um, so quick note here, as I mentioned, I got to jump off my, my rare 645 appointment is here. <laughs> yes, we still meet with people face to face if they want to, but I've got to jump out here. So if any questions, you guys know where to find us. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Sean. Um, other ways to increase purchasing power, um, adjustable rate mortgages, arms, those are not in fashion, those aren't the new fad or things to do, but you know, sometimes a lower interest rate could qualify you for more. And buying multifamily property. Let's say that you know, customer who qualifies for a, uh, a $200,000 house is now looking at duplexes in Lakewood. Well, on that, they're gonna move into one unit. They might rent the second unit out for 1200 bucks. We can count 75% of that rent as income. Now all of a sudden that buyer makes more money on paper now they may qualify for six, or excuse me, a two hundred thirty or two hundred forty thousand dollar price point, and it's obviously a great way to build equity, investment income, and and you know bettering your cash flow. So, um, does anybody have any questions on this slide? No. Yes, I do. I just couldn't find my mute button. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, if a if you have someone, say for instance, like an investor who is wanting to buy another property and can they count that investment property income toward buying another home or do you even do um, uh, those types of loans for investors? Yeah. yeah, Chris, do we do investor loans? Like a thousand. <laughs> yeah, lately. tons. It's almost <laughs> like half of what I do is investor loans. So yeah, it, it's it's been, I mean, we've always done investment and, and I'll give you kind of a quick little um, um in fact, uh, while we're talking here, I'm going to put a little, um, oops, move my email away from you guys. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm going to, you guys can still see my screen, right? 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, actually, let me just do it this way here. Here's just a little uh, bullet point of uh, investment. So it, the short answer to your question, yes, you have an investor. Let's say somebody lives in their primary residence and they have um, two rental properties and now they want to buy a third with you. Great. Fantastic. The two rental properties that they have it depends on how long they've owned them, what type of loan they're applying for. But the short version is yes, the rent that they're in, they're taking in on those two properties. Typically, we can count that. How much we count depends on how much they, how long they've owned them for, what income showing on their taxes. If they've owned it for a shorter term, like less than a year, we would be going off of a current lease. And the you know, the fourth property that they're purchasing that might be a rental. Typically, yes, we can count the rent from that income as well. So we just had an, a, an investor class last month. Um, and I, I, I think that's on the KW agent site if you wanted to go back and look at that. But this is stuff where you can call us um, anytime. But here's just some, some quick details that oftentimes we, uh, we put in here. In fact, I will, let me post this in the um, chat. The chat box again, once I find out where I move that on my screen here. Um, all right, I'll get it here somewhere. But um, I, I, I move so many things around on here. Here we go. <laughs> um, so if you're buying an investment property and it's a single family home, minimum down payment, um, technically 15%, but really I'll say 20%. Um, if it's a two, three or four family home, 25% down. Can't do anything over four. Anything over four units is going to be considered a, um, a commercial property. Um, all down payments have to be your own funds. You can't get a gift for a down payment when you're buying an investment property. So if me and my sister are buying an investment property together and I don't have money, but I'm going on the loan by myself, that's a problem. I can't get money from my sister who's not on the loan as a gift. So you know you always want to strategically plan if you've got investors. Um, what's the other one you have on here? Oh, um, the um, uh, title has to be in an individual's name. We can't lend money to a company. Again, that would be a commercial loan. We could lend money to an individual. Uh, an individual can borrow money, can be on a mortgage and title, but the, uh, an LLC cannot. Um, if you've got questions about that, reach out to Chris or I separately, but uh, or individually, and uh, we can give you a little bit more detail on that. But uh, see, so, Cindy, very long answer to your, you know, very short question. Does that does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. And and I sidebar here, investors are great. I mean, they're great customers. Um, you know, I, I've got I've got I have a customer who did about ten properties with me over a, about eighteen month period. Um, great customer, and I tell you. Each loan, I mean, each one is complex in its own stance because they've got all this extra cash flowing income that we have to document. So each one is a bit of work, but I tell you, you know, me and this buyer work like lockstep. I mean, I know his number by heart. He knows mine by heart. He's on the West Coast. I mean, great customers to have. The realtor loves him. You know, he hasn't even seen, been in half the properties that he owns because him and the realtor have a good relationship. They have a property management company. You know, there's a lot less emotion involved with these. Um, obviously, the other thing too is at some point, whether it's six months from now or 15 years from now, that guy's going to sell those 10 properties. And I know he's going to be talking with that same realtor. So absolutely great customers to have. So um, there you go. And I, I would you. go so far as to Chris's unintentionally become a specialist with investors because someone just landed and just landed on our desk here with these. So um, yeah. Wow. Um, how much do I need? So this is what we talked about down, uh, the, the, the product comparison tells you a little bit about the down payment requirements for each program. And I mentioned for investor closing costs, um, mortgage fees, title fees. We cover all this with a buyer, <laughs> excuse me, we cover all this with a buyer during the pre-qualification and pre-approval process. Um, so that they know, okay, I need to save up for this money or, or for that, uh, expense or, hey, I might need Cindy to ask the seller to help cover me with some of these costs or fees. So the amount of closing costs, I mean, if you're looking at a $100,000 house, you're probably looking a little over $3,000. If you're looking at a $400,000 house, you're probably closer to $4,000. So it's not a direct percent of the sale price, just to be clear. Prepaid items would be things like taxes and insurance. Um, reserves. Reserves aren't always required, but you know, if you've got someone with a shaky credit or somebody buying investment property, what reserves are, are extra cash in the bank. So you've got somebody buying a $100,000 house as an investment and they're putting $25,000 down, great. 
we want to see they get a little extra money to work with if this is an investment property, just in case there's some vacancy after they take ownership, or just in case there's some unforeseen, you know, life uh, emergency and they're going to be out of work for three months. We want to see they have a little pool of the funds. So reserves aren't required in all programs, but you know, sometimes you'll hear us loan officers talking about that. Um, credit. Uh, okay. So uh, credit reports, we have a whole class on that too. I know this is becoming just a teaser of other classes that we're offering in the future, but um, obvious ones, when we pull a credit report, we get a credit score that gives us pretty indication of what we had ahead of us, but what hurts your credit or what impacts your credit? Late payments, bankruptcies, foreclosures, collections, charge-offs, and you can't paint it with a broad brush. You know, bankruptcy, uh, chapter seven, you can do another mortgage for conventional if it's been four years, two years FHA. Foreclosures, it's three years convention or uh, FHA in seven years, but if it's a short sale, it's four years. So some of that, those flyers that I just up, uh, put out there um, have some of the information on that, but this is one. Hey, Sean, just met with a buyer. You know, I, I, I think they're going to think they're going to call, call you, but they did mention they had a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Um, they're, you know, halfway through it. How long? Oh, good news. They might be able to buy right now. So these are questions you can kind of just ask us on the fly. Um, oh, I think I skipped one. No, I guess that's it. So what happens next? We talked about pre-qualification, which merges right into a pre-approval. Um, two questions a lot of people ask, how long does it take to get pre-approved and how long are they good for? Uh, Pre-qualifications pre and pre-approvals, oftentimes they're same day. I mean, we can do them with hours. Now, sometimes they might have a little bit of, you know, a little uniqueness to them or a little bit more challenges. They may take longer, but they can be done oftentimes same day, but not always. How long are they good for? They're tied to the date of the credit report and our credit reports with cross country are good for 120 days. So someone got pre-approved this week, they're good through uh, the first week of May. So someone gets pre-approved, they what's the next step? They find a home. This is where you guys get to have your fun. Show three houses on a Sunday afternoon, pick one, you know, just like HGTV, go back to the coffee shop and uh, you know share the good news. Once the contract is accepted, then they have to come back and start the formal loan process. So if we haven't already, or if we even if we have, we may get updated pay stubs and bank statements. Um, we, we start the application and this is the one only time we collect any payment. We collect payment for the appraisal fee here in between application and processing. So the appraisal fee, depending on the loan type and how many units it is, it's gonna be between 500 and 700 dollars. Uh, that's the only fee that the buyer pays, and we don't collect that until after the buyer has obviously made the contract and has reviewed and signed their application. We'd rather them look at their paperwork, make sure they feel good about everything, then pay the fee for the application or for the appraisal. Um, loan processing, we have a whole class on this process, by the way, but loan processing is where they're doing income and asset verifications, updating any credit needs or uh, ordering survey title work. Uh, then the file goes to underwriting. <coughs> Underwriting issues, a loan approval, and that's the big thing. So the milestones we have are application, appraisal order, loan uh, loan processing. Um, sorry, sorry, doing these on the top of my head. I apologize if I'm repeating myself. So application, processing, appraisal, loan goes to underwriting, and we have a condition approval. We let the buyer know, hey, good news, your loan's been approved, subject to these conditions. Need new bank statement, updated pay stub, finalize your homeowner's insurance. Once those items are collected, it goes back to underwriting again for the final review, the final approval. If we have the final approval, we're then scheduling the closing um, within 24 hours. So this, pro this process from application to closing, um, someone says, well, how long does that take? Well, the national average, not with cross country, but the national average right now from the time someone applies for a loan, not goes under contract, but applies for a loan to closes is 53 days. Cross-country mortgage did 50 billion loans uh, last year in 2021, 50 billion dollars in loans, I should say. <clears throat> and our average time was under 30 days. I think it was around 26. Um, somebody tonight, they're, they applied for a mortgage. They just got declined. We think we can make the deal. And they said, Sean, do you think close before the end of the month? I said, well, obviously I need to review everything, but if everything is as good as it sounds, we would be able to close before the end of the month. So we can close quick. Our 21 day closing um, is, is kind of what we're known for, but the buyer has to be qualified and motivated. And you'd be shocked how many buyers want to close at the end of the month, but eh, 
they don't feel like going to the bank to get their bank statements because, or they don't feel like digging up their password from their, you know, whoever their cheat sheet is to log into their phone. So they can, it, there, there's um, always some drama. So how do we stem this? Get them pre-approved up front, get all that information. Um, so, you know, that's just part of our scripts and hopefully your scripts too saying, hey, the reason you wanna get pre-approved isn't because necessarily because I don't believe you can buy a house. It's so that I know you've taken all the steps needed. So when we put that offer in, we could tell the buyer you're good and we can get you in this home happy within 30 days or whatever the deal is. So, um, any questions on that? Yes. So with the pre-approval, um, if, if a person wanted to purchase a home, for instance, that maybe was like a fixer upper, the pre-approval, can they get like borrow extra money with that pre-approval to fix up the home? Is that what that is all including? Look at Cindy, already on slide 13. I love this. Yes. Oh, I'm we sorry. Have, no, I'm just joking. No, we have a renovation loan. So let's say that I say, oh yeah, you're qualified for a $200,000 house. They can't find anything for $200,000. And they're like, you know what? There's a house for 150. It's perfect. Except my wife's never going to let me live in this. The kitchen needs a remodel. The basement should be finished. Um, you know, and it needs a new roof. We do have a renovation loan. There's, and there's, we have multiple. There's a conventional renovation loan. We have a renovation class, by the way, but there's a conventional renovation loan and there's an FHA. It's called the FHA 203K. The short version is they could buy this house for one, 150, let's say, um, with, let's say with a kitchen remodel and a new roof, it's going to cost $40,000. 150 plus 90, that's 190. With an FHA loan, they can put three and a half percent down of that. So less than $7,000, they could finance this all in there. Now, there are a few strings attached. You can't close this in 30 days. You know, good luck getting a contractor to answer the phone, let alone come out and put the bid in and get all the paperwork. I mean, hopefully you've got content. Buyers can't do the work themselves, has to be contractors. Um, there's a high demand for this, this loan for obvious reasons. A lot of people who want to buy can't buy, so they're staying in their house and doing a renovation refinance. So this absolutely does exist. Um, we've got some flyers on that. Um, and if you've got like a scenario specifically or, or a buyer who kind of shows an interest in that, Let's do a conference call. Um, we have a specialist. Her name is Sandy Lutz. She's assigned to our team. So she's our renovation specialist. When, when this deal becomes live and we're under contract, Sandy gets brought in and she's then the, excuse me, the loan officer for that loan. But she's fantastic. So, um, so that answer your question? Yeah, it does. I'm just trying to, trying to be clear. So if they're, if they're getting this um, renovation loan, so where's the appraisal come in? Because if the house is only appraising at 100,000 because it, it's got a leaky roof or it's got a hole in the floor or whatever, and they're wanting to buy this house because that's what's available to fix it up and it's only appraising at 100, I've only got 3% down, what am I gonna, am I gonna qualify for the remaining renovation loan? So it has to, we're gonna appraise it as though the work is done. So that 150,000 scenario with the remodel kitchen, the appraiser is gonna say, this house is worth 190 as long as that, ki that kitchen is completed and that roof okay. is repaired. So FHA, believe it or not, it only has to appraise within to basically 90%. So that 190, it only has to appraise for the low 170s. Conventional has to appraise for that total amount. Otherwise the buy buyer has to bridge the difference. So that is, that is sometimes a challenge where you're putting, you know, for those of you who own homes on here, <laughs> we've all been through that. Oh, great. I'm going to do this. It's costing $10,000. Mm -hmm. It's probably not going to add $10,000 in value, but sometimes, you know, you find the right house and, and that's where, you know, the, the buyer renovation loans, I hate throwing this statistic out there, but only about half of them close. Part of it is because, you know, a lot of buyers get a little ambitious going, oh my God, I just saw the property brothers put a 600 square foot addition on refinish a basement, put on a new roof and put in a pool for about 8,000 bucks. And then, you know, they go talk to a real contractor and they're like, yeah, it'll be about $90,000. And, you know, <laughs> there's a, you know, sort of spiritual visit there that, okay, maybe this isn't going to work or, okay, I'm over improving this for the value. So sometimes that does happen. Um, and of course, if this is a purchase, you have to make sure that seller is aware that, okay, this isn't going to be a three-week close. This is going to be a bit longer process. And oh, by the way, seller, I'm going to have contractors in and out of this house to figure out, you know, what I need to do to it. So 
but but you know uh, uh, some sellers are fully aware hey there's i realize this house isn't going to sell in its current condition so it's going to be cash or renovation anyway so that's where those opportunities pop up gotcha so so uh, just a few other things on this uh, this last slide pmi um you know we've got a whole class on that and like i said you can we we have talked to buyers who, hey, no, no, I talked to so and so bank, and you know they said I'm capped out here. There's creative things you could do with PMI to to build affordability. So I'll just leave it at that. It's kind of a teaser. There's great options there that we can help you with. Jumbo loans. If you have a conventional loan over six hundred forty-seven thousand two hundred, that's a jumbo loan. With that comes slightly high interest rates, sometimes higher down payments, but not always. Um, but different rules and different guidelines. So if you're getting you're going to be doing properties at that price point. Definitely uh, uh, be be you know be conscious of that. Doctor loans. If you've got a physician or uh, a doctor, uh, podiatrist, chiropractor, veterinarian, things like that, uh, things of, of of that type of career, um, we do have a doctor loan. It's a zero hmm. down. If you've got certain credit, zero down, no PMI. You buy a five hundred thousand dollar house, you might qualify to get a five hundred thousand dollar loan with no money out, with no down payment and no PMI. So, if if that happens to be a niche of yours, that's a great market to get into, especially for the higher price points as well. Um, so, FYI, quick question: the doctor loan is that just for an MD, or can someone have a PhD? PhD, it's it's primary, it's MD, um, with the exceptions would be chiropractor. Um, uh, veterinarian, and they've talked, to, flirted with opening it up to other options, but as it stands right now, still, still just MD and, and the more medical type. Okay. Dentist. The last one I did was a dentist. Good one. There you go, Chris. Yeah. yeah. So you know, get into your. Now you're going to see your dentist twice a year. There's two referrals. <laughs> well, that's at least once. And hey, who hasn't had to stop going to the hospital for a COVID test? Um, nurses, I. I God bless them. Um, I mean, they bust their butts. There's, and I've done so many nurses loans. And I tell you, I feel like we're, you know, doing charitable work by getting a nurse into the house. Half the nurses don't get to spend much time in it. But, uh, you know, so we're all into, you know, <laughs> giving back to those who give. So, um, you know, and, and total side note here, but I, you're talking to agents so much new, find your niche, you know, uh, you know, if you're looking to build clientele and build business, um, VA loans, again, we got a whole class on that, but don't be afraid of VAs. If, you got, if you're a veteran yourself or have a family member, oh my God, because realtors, you've got realtors who've been doing this for 30 and 40 years who still panic when they hear VA loans because they don't remember anything and it just makes them nervous. They're, they're great loans, they're slam dunk, they're no money down. Um, so, you know, find your niche, find your market, find your specialty. I mean, um, you know, your spouse may work in, you know, in a post office, make sure everybody in that post office knows that, you know, Joe's wife, Cindy or whatever is a real estate guru. And she's going to get me a house. I want when I want, she'll probably hook me up with a, a charming loan officer who's going to get me a low rate, you know? So really, I mean, that I, that's the one, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's doing bold or ignite. I'm sure they're talking about those kinds of things, but you know, I, I've seen being in the Keller Williams office for as long as I have, I've seen so many new agents come in and it is, Pretty cool to see. I mean, some of the big names in this company, um, you know, Ryan Young and the Young team, um, uh, Scott Phillips, uh, um, uh, trying to just think off the top of my head, agents who I knew them back when they were sitting in the call booth for three hours doing their lead generation. And now they're leading teams and, you know, the faces on billboards and the radio stations and all that, you know, that could be you I start to get all cheesy, but it, it, it really is just, you know, kind of getting your name out there and, and talking to as many people, people as possible. So, um, you know, we love nothing more than the partner and help you guys grow that business. So um, just some other side stuff, um, you know, we may reach out to you kind of just with a little follow-up. I encourage you guys to, to call if you guys ever want to see, do like a 30-minute one-on-one Zoom or pop in the class. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Or, you know, we have some co-marketing things where we can, you know, build flyers that that kind of joint market, Chris, you and Chris, or me and you, and, and things like that. So just know that that exists. Um, and, you know, this day and age, you know, these meetings used to be in the office, um, which you know, there might be less of, of you there, but, you know, there was a little bit more of a personal touch and get to know each other. So 
you know, we've got a lot of agents in the office. We try and stay in front of you as much as possible. And, you know, we may call you just to check in and see if we could help, but, you know, please don't hesitate to, to call or stop in any time. Um, any, any, I, that, I guess that was my little wrap up, but do you guys have any questions, Randy? Um, I just wanted to say for all the other agents on here, I worked with Sean when I was buying my house a year and a half ago, and he, it really is the best. So I did, I did work with Rocket Mortgage too, and not, not even a comparison. They're so much better. Every time I see Justin's name, I was like, I see that. I, why, why does that name keep coming up? I love it. So thank you, Justin. Did, Dana. did anyone beat my uh, interest rate that you locked in for me? Uh, <laughs> I will. I may have to go back and check after we hang up. I love it. And, and, and I have to know, this. the cactus is behind you. What's the story? Um, those were like one of those paint and sip things we did. One of them I, I did, and the other one's my girlfriend's. Uh, oh, Mine doesn't nice. look as good when it gets closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll keep the zoom. We won't zoom in too close. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Justin, for speaking up. I appreciate that. Cool. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, just yeah, this is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know how long does a home buyer uh, have to have PMI typically? So a good question. It, so it won't be a short answer. Uh, well, not that long, but the short version is if it's FHA, the mortgage insurance works like this. If they put 10% or more down, it goes away after 11 years. If they put less than 10% down, they have it for the life of the loan. Okay. That's FHA. For conventional, it depends on how much they put down and how fast they're putting equity. Uh, and, and I have a flyer for this. I, I might, won't pull it up here at the moment, but if somebody puts 5% down, the PMI will automatically go away when the balance gets to 78%. So if somebody had a $100,000 loan or purchase a $100,000 loan, um, when the loan balance gets to 78, it'll automatically go away. When it gets to 80, they can call and get it removed. Now, if they're putting the minute 5% down, making the minimum payment, it's going to take about nine or 10 years to get rid of that. But in that time, hopefully the house is going up in value. Right. And as it appreciates, you're building equity that way. So if a combination, even if you're not down to 80,000, let's say you're down to 70 or excuse me, 90,000, but now your value is up around 120, you may be able to get it rid of it that way. So you have to call the lender. Um, and say, hey, I think my house has gone up enough in value. And they say, okay, let me see how long you've been in the house. Minimum two years. Okay, great. We have to show that you have this much equity. Do you want to pay for an appraisal to prove that? Here's what you need. So um, that's a little bit longer answer for conventional, but that's how it works. Okay, that's enough information. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're going to love my PMI class. Um, <laughs> yeah, and sorry, I, I, I uh, Chris didn't get to talk a whole lot. Chris, like I said, we sit very close to each other in the office. So the poor guy gets to hear me all day and not gets to hear me all night. But um, but just know that we're we're here for you. I didn't mean to sound like a therapist, but we're here for you for any mortgage needs you have. Like I said, even if it's not a transaction that we're working on, um, you're in a jam or just need some quick information or you just want to get a little bit more background to you know talk to your buyer or seller, you know, we're here for you. Call any of us anytime. Okay. That's all good. One other quick question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. no, right. If I've had, I had this happen. Well, it wasn't me. I was selling a home and the person who was going to buy the house um, had been pre-approved and was, you know, ready to go ahead, but then they purchased a car mm -hmm. and then they lost their financing. So how does that affect when you're purchasing a home? So um, as we're talking, I'm going to see if I can fly it, find my do's and don'ts flyer. Um, so oh, it's not on my short list here, but um, you got a flyer for everything, Sean. Yes, I do. <laughs> and, and, a, and a seminar for everything. So um, I'm going to see if I get. So if somebody goes and buys a car, here's here's kind of the, you know, first off, that new credit inquiry can knock down their credit score. That's not a huge factor, but that's one thing. But that new car payment is now a new debt and that can reduce how much you're qualified for. So remember that what scenario I said, somebody qualifies for 125, we get rid of a car payment of 200, that puts them up to 150. Well, that could be the reverse. Oh, they have no car, they qualify for 150. Hey, what's this credit inquiry with you know Ford? Oh, I, I just bought a new car, how much? Boom. I mean, and it could be, as most of you know, with car payments, I mean, 
you. You might have a $119 car payment. You might have a $950 car payment. And I've had that happen many times. So during that pre-qualification, we typically remind them, and I would suggest you as your realtor, now don't forget, you know, while you're shopping for a house, don't open any new credit cards, don't make any large cash deposits, don't go buy a car, uh, because that next car could be what you're living in if, 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 if you know, things don't go the way we want. Um, and, and I've seen, uh, I, I could tell you this guy's name, I remember it, this was in 2008-ish, worked with this guy for six months to get his credit up, and he was such a nice guy, great guy, Find, and he it, it finds a house, um, ends up doing a rent to own, not a rent to own, just a lease. And then the, the landlord said, I'll sell it to you in you know, six months, which was perfect. Got his credit up. Um, we, we comes into the office, uh, pull his credit report. He got a new uh, Lincoln Navigator. I don't remember what the payment was, but I almost fell off my chair. I said, what are you doing? You know, him and his wife came in and, you know, she get a look on her face like, I told you, idiot, you know, not to me, but to him. And we couldn't do it. We, I mean, here they were, six month contract, they're living in the house. So who shows up three hours later? His father-in-law comes in and he's co-signing with them. That was the only way we can get it done. I mean, and, and the story works so well because I kid you not, it was a Lincoln Navigator. Um, it's probably in the parking lot as we sat there. I mean, technically that car was probably big enough where he could live in, but he had a handful of kids too. So. Oh, wow. um, it happens, but you know the best we can do is just educate a buyer because, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes when that happens, it's not like well, you didn't tell me what to do. It's sort of either they were trying to hide it or they forgot or you know. So yeah, those are big ones to ask. So somewhere mm -hmm. around here, I have a flyer of do's and don'ts, and that one would be another fitting. So I, I'll do a whole class just on flyers and just hand them out all day long. But <laughs> something for everything. Very good. Now, I understand why the credit inquiries and the debt would be an issue, but why not a deposit? What's wrong so with that? So a deposit, uh, uh, Chris, you want to take a stab at this one or? Large deposits? Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah. Um, yeah. So off the top of my head, the, I don't remember the rules perfectly. I refer back to one of those handy flyers all the time, but um, there are a certain amount of large deposits or, or a certain dollar amount uh, compared to the loan amount, depending on your program, that basically raise a red flag to an underwriter. It's not going to, you know, in the deal or anything, but the underwriter might say, hey, this is a little bit of a large deposit. Can you look into it? Get us a letter of explanation. Sometimes it's real easy. You know, we just show proof. They sold something. Here's a receipt, whatever. Easy enough. Sometimes the explanation, not within the rules for us to keep it in there, we have to do what we call backing it out where we say, well, let's just ignore that money. We have enough without it. It doesn't matter. Um, the problem comes in where, you know, if someone has a lot of cash at home, they've been saving in the sock drawer, they go, they're like, we're ready to buy this house. I ask them, you know, it's going to take $10,000, uh, you know, in down payment and closing costs. Do you have that? Absolutely no problem. Cool. Just send me your bank account. Well, it's a, you know, they had 50 cents in there until last week. And now there's $10,000 in there. Where'd that come from? Cash at home. Oh no. And then that's, you know, kind of why they keep an eye on, on that. The, the funds need to be what we call seasoned, uh, you know, in a bank account for 60 days. Um, it, it, and verified funds. So, and the reason kind of where that rule probably came from years ago was, all right, there's a $5,000 deposit. How do we know you didn't go get a cash advance on a credit card? We have to show it came from a legal source because mm -hmm. you, can, you, can't, you, only you can't borrow money for a down payment unless it's a secured asset. Like I borrowed from my 401k or I borrowed it against my car or I borrowed it against my home. You can't use a credit card and you can't use cash because it's it sort of it, it say, well, it's not that we can't use that. We just can't show where it came from. So, you know, I had somebody who was a waitress um, and they documented that they withdraw mo withdrew money. And, you know, every now and then you can get a very, very rare exception, but it happens all the time. I mean, C Chris and I had one of the bigger headaches of 2021. And we had a lot of them um, for a buyer who um, she, her and her family just never trusted banks. So they just stuffed it in the mattress or the Folgers can or wherever they hid it. And, you know, it just showed up in their account. We're like, okay, great. Just, you know, just we have to document where this money came from. They're like, yeah, yeah, it just came from my house. 
but where did that come from? They're like, well, I just, you know, I, I'm just a saver. I don't trust banks. <laughs> it's like, okay, there's a whole generation of people who don't trust banks, by the way. Um, so that's a problem. So we said, I know you have the money, we can't use it. So they had to scurry around and get gifts from family members. So we need $10,000, they have $10,000. Now we need 20 because we have to back that $10,000 out. And everyone's always trying to outsmart the system. And unfortunately, you know, it's not going to happen. Gotcha. Right. And, and when there's headaches, more often, you know, credit, usually we see what going into it, what the problem is. If someone's got you no know, funky income, we usually see that going into it. But you'd be surprised how many people are pre-approved contingent upon that money showing up a week before closing. And a week before closing, the money isn't there. The gift isn't there. The bonus is delayed at work or, you know, the commission check was shorted. You know, there's always some, it's when there's problems, it's almost always the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know, I'm showing my age here, but like Jerry Maguire says, show me the wire or Cuba Gooding, I guess, show me the money. <laughs> like a clear paper trail in a way, you have to know exactly where it's coming from. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If someone says, oh, that, that money came from my uh, PNC savings account. Okay, great. Give me the PNC savings. Okay. Where'd that $4,000 come from? Okay. It came from a gift from my mom. Okay, great. Mom needs to get her bank statement. We got a gift, got a gift letter from her and, you know, it snowballs from there. Okay. Uh, could you also add your do's and don'ts into the chat, please? Yeah, let me see if I could find that. That's one I don't even have. I'm, yeah, I'm I think kidding. it would be super helpful. I've been a real estate agent for like two weeks. So I'm just trying to take in as much information as possible. That's good. That's good. Keep so, asking questions. I've been one for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I so feel like uh, we were popping up now. together. Because I just I bought a house last year, so he's a pro. <laughs> see if I could find it real quick. Okay. Uh, oh, gee, this is a little old now that I look at it, but let me. Uh... All right, here, I'll throw this in. Th this is like our. My marketing people would kill me because it's our old logo and all that, but uh, we'll make this work. And just running through that, do complete your application thoroughly. Do respond to all questions. Do disclose all loans. Uh, let me skip ahead to the don'ts. Don't make any major purchases, financing a car, appliances, furniture. Uh, that's a big one too. The week before closing, Ashley Furniture has got a zero interest, you know, with uh, uh, with a credit, with putting things in a credit card. We get flagged on that. That's a problem. Don't move money around. Uh, don't use untraceable money, large deposits. Don't make a career change. You'd be shocked how many times in my career were the week of closing and we called the buyers and player just to make sure they still work there. They're like, nope, nope. Tom left his job three weeks ago. Uh, do you know where he went? No, nope. I got to call the buyer and go, hey, did, did you change jobs by chance? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, You think you should have told me about that? And, you know, how's that going <laughs> to impact things at the last uh, 11th hour? But that does happen. Even if they end up making more? They, they, it's probably fine. But, you know, when we go from they're working at, you know, ABC, you know, accounting services, and then all of a sudden go to, you know, progressive. We now have to verify when did you start progressive. What's your position? Are you paid hourly? Are you paid salary? Is it full time? Is there a, a probationary period? Is this an at will position? Oh wait, you're on commission. Okay, well that may change things. How much is the commission? Have you received commission for two years? It opens up a whole snowball of uh, right, right, okay. whole can of worms, I should say. Yeah, that makes total sense. We bought our house through Countrywide actually in 2008, and I remember. I can't remember if it was the, the handler of the loan or the agent saying, hey, whatever you two have been doing with your life for the past six months, just continue to do it for 60 days after closing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, you know, I've, sometimes I'll tell somebody, I say, hey, you, take this as a compliment. This is the most boring credit report I've seen all day or all week. And uh, just to keep up the good, and that's exactly where just sort of like, okay, You've been doing this, this, and this to get here. Just ride that out a little bit longer. 
Yeah, and it, it was a very smooth closing, so I appreciate okay. that. I love to hear that. Well, cool. Does anybody have any other questions for the night? No, thank no? you. Good. All right, I'm cool. Well, thank you. Anything you guys need? I think that was everything on my list here. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, obviously, as I keep saying, anything you guys need, just feel free to uh, give me a call, uh, Chris and Don, and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing the office and good to see you, Justin.